So we had um, been thinking about getting a 3D printer, but we didn't know where to start. You know, there was such a wide variety out there on the market and I hadn't had ex any experience using them before. So I wasn't sure about what kind of skills I'd need to you know, be using it. And I didn't know anything about the software that you'd need to design the models either. So that's where we came in at. Um, the opportunity came up for us to be a trial school for the STEM share. Um, kits and we jumped at the opportunity. So we jumped onto the SharePoint and that was fantastic because there was a step-by-step -step video on there telling us how to set the printer up, um, what software we need and it had all the lesson resources there as well so we had lesson plans ready to go to start um, implementing in the classes. Um, initially that's what we thought it would be, that it's like another added extra, but once we started looking deeper at the lessons, um, we just saw so many opportunities for integration, particularly with the 3D printer, like mathematics, um, it's so practical that kids are working with 3D objects and um, it actually um, links really well with math, so it wasn't, it actually just replaces some of those lessons that you might normally have done with um, 3D objects. We had every student, so 150 students all ended up with an, a 3D printed product um, and yeah, they, um, I guess within the classes as well, you had um, your gifted and talented students, you know, were really able to um, adapt, you know, their designs and, and make these amazing designs and then your lower ability students were able to jump in as well and, and still finish up with an end product. Uh, they were really excited, yes. Um, the um, Tinkercad software was really accessible. We tried the um, units in classes from years three to six, and um, all of the classes were able to um, produce an end product. So yeah, it was quite easy to differentiate um, the units. Yeah, the, I guess they appreciated having us um, teach, team teaching in there with them. So we were able, they were almost like students in the classroom initially. They were learning along with the students. Um, and um, we were able to help them with any troubleshooting issues. Um, and then the teachers who were already um, had maybe used some 3D design software before, they were able to bring their knowledge in and, and help enhance the units as well. We mainly stuck with the Toy Story unit, but um, there was lots of talk about how they could then adapt you know, the use of Tinkercad for um, other projects next year like seeing what other schools are doing on Twitter as well and um, seeing lots of you know exciting opportunities for us to so we're now that we've trialed the 3D printer we're going to purchase some for next year and um, I've seen opportunities for integration with some of our science units as well like I loved um, I saw one of the schools um, that was studying classification and they got students to design different birds from different species and I thought you know that's we do classification in stage two so what a way to you know get students to apply their learning. I guess not only does um, the do these STEM units help develop all those soft skills like it was amazing for the students problem solving, creativity, critical thinking. Um, there are definitely links with the outcomes as I was saying with mathematics, 3D objects and it actually makes the learning real for students. Um, before whenever I've taught you know 3D objects it seems very abstract for students that thinking well why do I need to know you know about a sphere and a cube you know? but actually for them to actually have to manipulate those 3D objects and um, in Tinkercad you're, um, you're joining objects you're creating holes with one object into another object they're actually applying that learning and they actually see a real world use for it so there are definitely um, links to syllabus outcomes as well it doesn't have to be an added extra. It was for my sister, that's why I has MC there. My name, but um, it had to uh, go off because it couldn't speak on it so well. And I made its eyes and 3D printed. It's supposed to be able to go out of here, but um, it got patched up. 
so can't go out? I think jump onto that SharePoint because um, we'd never used a 3D printer before and I was apprehensive about you know what technical skills I'd need to actually use it but it, those videos were so easy to follow um, and again with the design software the videos are step by step you've got stage three, um, year three students following along and you know if they can do it we can do it as well yeah, it was very easy well, again, with the new science and technology curriculum, it's all about learning about that design process. So we didn't um, jump in straight into Tinkercad. We um, studied the history of toys, then um, we had students doing their 2D design, sketching up their toys, and um, that was really valuable for them to then go into the design software and um, think about how to convert, you know, they, they'd all had these amazing ideas for toys, but then actually to convert that into a um, physical design, it was that was a great learning process for students. And then when we started printing some of their designs and they didn't actually necessarily look the way that they had envisaged, they would look, you know, from using the Tinkercad software, again, that was another um, really valuable learning opportunity for them. So um, learning all about the stages of the design process um, that was great. They um, needed to problem solve. Sometimes they wanted to um, create a certain shape and it wasn't necessarily there in the menu so they had to you know, really problem solve about how am I going to um, you know, achieve that shape by combining different shapes. So that was great as well. Uh, don't forget to put in your supports when you're splicing your model because we've had a, lot, a few spooling issues where yeah, if you don't put your supports in then um, the the filament starts to spool and then you know often um, you've sort of wasted, you've sent it off, maybe I set um, something to print overnight and they come into a nice big pile of spooled filament in the morning. Um, sometimes yeah, the, um, the printing head will clog a little bit so we had to problem solve a little bit with that and um, I discovered sometimes the old turn it off and turn it on again trick works and um, unloading the, um, the filament head as well that seemed to do the trick um, maybe if you can printing um, like a smaller version of your design first because it's like obviously a lot quicker and then if you know you can sort of troubleshoot and then maybe make it um, bigger and then do the big four hour prints after that after you sort of troubleshooted all the design issues um, I really recommend um, you trialling the equipment with StemShare first because then you can see if you like that particular model and um, yeah, just see how you go and think about how you might use it. Um, we used Seesaw with um, our unit as well which was really valuable so we had children taking screenshots of their designs in Tinkercad, they took photos of their initial 2D designs and then they took photos again of their final 3D printed product and that was so valuable when reporting time came because we could see, just pop into each student child's um, Seesaw account, see their learning journey where they'd gone from their initial design to their final um, printed 3D product and um, assessment was really easy then you could just see the different levels of um, design from you know, the different students so that was fantastic. I guess um, I would maybe pair the classes up and get two classes doing the unit together that way you've got um, a teacher who's feeling more confident um, working with you know someone who's really unsure and we did like one of the classes that trialled um, our unit the teacher um, you know, doesn't like to use a lot of technology and, and doesn't feel very confident. But um, yeah, by the end of the journey, um, she was really supportive and and, you know, and, and just could see the value um, of what the children had got out of it. And you know, they're so engaged. Um, yeah, it, it's fantastic. Um, we're doing the Stuart House Me Feed, so raising money for Stuart House because, because you're giving yeah. money away to someone who needs it more. Yeah. We yeah. can we can learn and then also help other people at the same time. I think it's a place where they're taking homeless people or refugees. Yeah, for kids with <laughs> troubled lives. Yeah. I'm a bit nervous, like I had no idea how the software would work. Um, and also it was a bit challenging to think, oh, I have to build something out of nothing. Like I had no idea what I was going to build. Well, we knew we had to design a toy um, it couldn't be a moving toy because we couldn't have a way to put something electronic in it. 
So I thought of a pencil topper because that's something that I, a toy that I used to like. Um, and I, my friends realised that it was already a product, so I had to change it quite a lot. Well, I knew I wanted a plant to do it on. Mm -hmm. um, but for the beginning part, we did these tutorials on the software. Um, I found it hard to move everything around, but it like the tutorials were really helpful, and I learned a lot through that. So. I think most people could use it, yeah. I was originally going to do a model of Sydney Airport or another uh, famous landmark, but I chose this one because Sydney Airport's do it too flat. Yeah. Uh, so first I had to uh, decide what I was doing, and then I had to make the base first because there was no prefab base for the bottom. We did present them in class and um, we did a voting process where people voted for their favourite toy. We did... we. Whilst we were doing designing them, we were also like recording how we were going with our project, and at the end we presented the how we were our re recount of the project, and we also did a pitch about why our toy is the best. Maybe for fun. geography, you could do like you could design like a little city for like a new like for a new country or something like that. Art, maybe like we could bring our drawings to life. I also say that teachers should get involved in well because none of our teachers designed a product. You have to be persistent because if your design didn't work firstly, you can not just give up and make something new. You have to keep on improving on design as you go along. Patience and persistence was a big one, I think, because a lot of designs, the, it had a malfunction in the software. Um, you had to adapt it and just keep trying, for example. I had a flower on here, but it wouldn't print, so I had to um, add more details elsewhere rather than having a flower. And also to be ubiquitous, to always learn from your mistakes and improve on it next time. Uh, because sometimes it took, takes a long time to design a mold, it doesn't just come overnight. So if something, did, if something went wrong, you would have to like... So if sometimes the cylinders didn't align for me, and then it kind of looked more like the cylinder tower, not the Burj Khalifa. So if you want to design like a robot and you want to show the people what the robot looks like, you might do a 3D model to first show them and then they could for, then they could actually build it because you, you don't want to iron, you want to iron out your mistakes before they actually happen. Uh, so there, for First Lego League, we have to design, we have to do a project about something and our idea was to do recycling in space and our model needed to be printed to show what it looks like. We used carbon fibre to print spare parts and uh, fix <laughs> spacecraft defects in our but idea. How do you decide what's $1 and what's $2? This is $2, that's $1. Size. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Like, like how it made them, like the details. Yeah. Cool, creative and unique. Yes, they are. Hey, Mark, it's your turn. What's your sales pitch? They are all designed by Lane Cove West students and they're going to a good cause. Thank you for visiting Lane Cove West. Bye! Bye.